Riveting content, empowering your life. Welcome to The Sphere. This episode is sponsored by Elite Dental Wellness. At Elite Dental Wellness, Dr. Ashandra Batiste understands that one of the biggest obstacles is dental fear. The vision at Elite Dental Wellness is to ensure every patient is treated with respect, ultimate care, patience, and love. Call us today to make an appointment at area code 713-789-8680. Houston Housewives of Finance. For more information on increasing your cash flow, becoming your own money manager, and to schedule your complimentary personal finance strategy, contact the Houston Housewives of Finance today at 1-844-700-4463. Looking to advertise? Join the Sphere's vast demographic reach of thousands of people all over the world. Send an email today to advertise at thesphere.tv or call us at area code 832-772-7789. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Hashtag. It's episode um, 56. Uh, we have some hot fire for y'all today, you know what I'm saying? Um, we rolling too deep. Too, well, I forgot how that, that one thing go, that song. Fuck it. It is. Too, <laughs> too deep in, in bando. It, jumping at the bit. All right, all right, I'm done. Um, anywho, it's just me and Chris today, but that's okay because we got all the energy, all the flavors for y'all. You feel me? Um, but before we go ahead and get into our topics, of course, Chris got to introduce and roll herself in. What's up? Hey, girl. Hey, everybody. It's your girl, Chrissy Vet. You can find me here at the bottom at sure underscore law underscore chris at ig as well as my website www.blackoutofthebox.com we have some hot shit coming very very soon check us out please as well as with hashtag like it, we we just about to blow it up like so check all of that <laughs> oh yeah that that was so much thing you I know for bouts yeah i wish i could stand up <laughs> and do the yeah. twist and the turn around that's my part yes that, whole, that, slow, that little slow turn <laughs> Look here. Oh my God! That's I want to do. I need to find all the right pieces to do Halle Berry from Babs for Halloween with that orange jumpsuit. Girl, Bitch, I want to do the whole hair, the whole hair. They're the gonna hear you coming thing. from down the street. All that plastic, <laughs> girl. I need that. I need that in my life. Um. Anywho, oh, you know what the you know what the deal is. Follow me on the gram, you feel me? Follow me on the gram, underscore Tiffany Noco. Check out my website, TiffanyNoco.com. Um, also, we made a Twitter for the show, you guys. That is where you can go ahead and add us. Let us know how you personally feeling. You know what I'm saying? You with the shits. We all got access to it, so we can respond, you know? You just say, hey, Chris, hey, Tiff, hey, Zane, I'm talking to you. We with the <laughs> shit, okay? So go ahead and follow us on Twitter. It's at um, Spirit TV hashtag. Um, and that's where we'll let you know what events we have going on, where we're going to be, what prizes and giveaways we have. Because uh, we do have some live events coming on. We're going to tell you all about that before we close the show out. But we do got some prizes for you all, too. You know what I'm saying? So come see us. Um, and that's Houston, Austin, and Dallas. You feel me? Because we just out here, like, about to take over Texas. Okay, um, and then we're gonna step into y'all territory, Atlanta. We might be coming for y'all. I don't know y'all look crazy. We're gonna get into a discussion about y'all later. Anywho, um, so uh, one of the topics that we need to roll in, and this was something that was really big over the weekend. Um, hashtag power. Ooh, hashtag power. <laughs> I have so much to say. Oh my gosh. Okay, tell us what you have to say, Chris. Okay, first of all, I'm a big Power fan. I've been a really big fan since the show started. Um, Amari Hardwick, fine. So Lord. Fine. Yes, it's sickening. So I've seen him at Essence. He's 
ugh, just all of that. Okay, anyway, so I got a question now. Since sure. you've seen him in person, because I yes. haven't. <laughs> no, get me. What's up? Um, is he tall? No. Oh my! He's God. like average height for a guy. He's no. not like. I mean, he's not. Put it like this. Is he at least six feet tall? No. Oh my God. He's like he's like five eight. Five eight. Five eight five nine. Jesus Christ. It's like he's in the fives. It's not like he's above five five, but he's not six feet. But he's wow. like a high five. High five. <laughs> <laughs> I'm lame, so. Wow. But he's very, very oh, attractive. I have asked. And it's funny, brief brief story about how I seen this nigga. So I was drunk and shit and we were somewhere on bourbon. And I was walking, it was a huge crowd, and we seen Candy and Don Juan on a balcony. Don't ask me why I know these motherfuckers. Mm-hmm. I watch reality TV. Mm-hmm. It's my crack. Okay, so anyway, we're walking, and he was literally, like, walking next to us. And he had, like, a hat on and a hood, but it was low, right? Wow. So I was like, I was like, are you, like, that nigga ghost? And he was like, shh. I said, oh, shit, it is that nigga. Like, I was like, you do, that is him. Wow. So I went in the bar and got my little daiquiri. And then I said it to the bartender because she was black. I said, girl, I, said, I think I seen ghosts outside. And then next thing I know, what? There's ghosts, girl. I'm telling you, all the black wow. girls ran out. Wow. I kid you not. So that's what happened. But back to power. So uh, R.I.P. Okay, let's just jump into it. Let's just, did let's you, just, did just you see into that it. coming? Because I did. Bro, let's I just, knew. I knew. Like, I know when people have their time coming on power. We all know. <laughs> it creeps up. It creeps up on it, right? But what I did not, I did not expect for it to be this show. Like, I thought it was going to be a little later in the season because, you know, Kanan came back in. Yeah. I knew Kanan was going to have to go because I knew he was going to be a problem, especially after he threatened Tasha. Oh, yeah. Like, I knew oh, he yeah. had to go. Yeah. But I thought that they were going to use him a little bit more because he was on a fucking killing spree. He was doing all the dirty work for well, them. He was doing all the dirty work for them. I thought it was going to come a little later. Well, that's what Kanan does. You know, he, he's that grimy ass nigga. Grimy. And that was a funny, whoever posted, it's been, well, let's just get into a spoiler alert if you don't watch Power, wow. don't give a fuck, or you haven't watched the shit yet. That nigga Kanan did. And it's a shocker because Kanan is like Michael Myers. Like this nigga Keep coming keeps back, coming bro. back. It doesn't matter. You can burn this nigga, drown him, cut appendages off. <laughs> it don't fucking matter. This nigga's coming back for you in that ass. I have to say this. Period. He went out like a fucking G, he did. bro. Like he a did. G. I was so surprised. I was I was what surprised, but not surprised when he started busting. I said, bro, Kanan is a motherfucking G. And you know, they played the whole scene like it was gonna backfire. I knew he was not going to harm Tariq. I knew he wasn't gonna harm him. Like I knew I don't I just knew like if it's anybody that he's not going to harm, it's going to be Tar- Tariq. And it's so crazy because, you know, I feel like it's so sad to say in this scenario. I feel like Tariq finally came to his senses. But it's so sad to say because it's like, it's also fucked up shit. Yeah. You know, it's like you finally came to your senses where it's like, okay, you see everybody's trying to protect you so that your ass don't go to life for prison. And it's like, okay, now you finally came to your senses about, okay, I can really go to life for prison. I mean, go to prison for life. But it's like, it's on some backfire well, let's talk about oh, Tasha shit. first. I think we have to talk about Tasha I don't first blame before Tasha. we even before we get into everything. I don't blame Tasha. Kane and Ben had to go. Um, she had to do what she had to do to protect her family. You know what I'm saying? That's just what it was at the end of the day. Because I mean, they could have went for Dre, but the way everything just kind of played out was great, and it was kind of like a nice. Y'all ever heard a nice classical movement? Just a nice, wonderful violins and cellos. And yeah. It just flowed together <laughs> like a symphony. So I think it went really well. And I don't blame Tasha. I mm, I did cringe that she didn't put Ghost in the loop just because. I don't. He. But but knowing Ghost and how he's been, yeah. it's like, shit, fuck that nigga. Yeah. I got to do yeah. what I got to do. But at the end of the day, I do get what he's saying, though, because he's like, you put my son in danger. Like, she did. Kane and crazy as fuck. She did. You see. I, I I know Kanan's crazy, but I'm telling y'all, it's so it's so crazy. There was no doubt in my mind that he wouldn't harm Tariq. That's because he actually loved Tariq. Like right, a son. right, yeah. right. I just knew that he was not going to harm him, but bro, I just I just cannot get over the way he went out. Like he went out on some Tommy shit. Yeah, he did. <laughs> like that's the way I can see Tommy going out. And yeah. I just I just I don't know on so many different levels, it was so G for me. Mm-hmm. And I just like enjoyed the scene so much. It's so crazy, but I enjoyed the shit so much. It's 
is nuts. But also, I have a question because sure. I, when I was watching the show, I was thinking about this shit, bro. I feel like Tasha was a bit out of line to ask Keisha to lie for her in front of a grand jury. Oh, talk now. That's that's she what I want to talk about. Line. Now that's out what I want to talk about when I talk about Tasha. Let's talk about her as in, as a whole. Tasha is like. I get it. You want Keisha to be loyal to you. This is your friend and all of that. However, at the end of the day, you've kept her out of the loop of so much yeah. for so long. Yeah. And it's like on some real ass shit, that's disrespectful. Y'all niggas ran drug money in my shop. And I didn't even know when a nigga had to sit here and duck out and hide from everybody for right. forever. Right. So it's like, I mean, can you blame her? I don't understand why Tasha just won't be as forthright with her as she should. Because Tommy is. I don't feel like Tasha's. I don't feel like Tasha's. 100% honest with anybody. I'm just She's like ghosts. She's she, not 100% she's like honest ghosts. with anybody. Yeah. Like, she she lies. Like ghosts. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, in, in some aspects, I get it. But in some aspects, I'm just kind of like, okay, you know, why you just don't tell the girl what's up? You feel me? Yeah. But I definitely do feel like it's it's well past crossing the line for you to ask this girl. It's and like and then I totally felt her when she was like, It's one thing to lie to the police, you know, when they are questioning they have me in question it. It's one thing to do that. But right. it's another thing to lie in front of a fucking jury, bro. Like you're going down if they find out that you're lying. And oh, yeah. then not to mention it's like, I didn't ask for this. You no, dragged you j- me into it. It, and it's different. It's like everybody else around you, they ask for it. Yeah. They ask for it because they hold they they fully agree to be a part of this life. Right. She didn't agree. No, absolutely not. I mean, at the end of the day, it's fucked up and I can't call you friend. Right. That's just my thing. Right. And it's like I get it. I felt the ways about Lakeisha too. She could have went a few times. I was like, Lakeisha can go. Yeah. Like I'm over her a few times. But I mean, I guess we'll see where her and Tommy go, them and this old swirl thing they got going on. We see what happens. Yeah. You know what? I stopped. Okay. I was behind on power for like two shows, bro, because the moment I seen Ghost and Angela back together, I was sick. I'm not going to lie to you. I hate them together. I hate them together. It made me so sick. I had, I like, I stopped watching it for like a week, maybe two weeks because I was like two episodes behind. It makes me sick to my stomach. I hate to see them together. I really do. I hate to see though. them together. Bro, also, also, like, I don't blame, um, what's the lawyer's name? Oh, um, Proc- Proctor. Proctor. Don't blame him. I don't blame him for Chunk and Deuce. Like, I'm not, I'm sorry. I'm not going to lose my profession that I worked so hard for for so many years behind you and your husband, who I'm not even, who you haven't divorced and who I'm not even sure that you're going to leave. I'm not doing it. Well, I think the thing with Proctor is he feels that he does have a little bit of loyalty to James and Tommy. Mm -hmm. Um, Because at the end of the day, I mean, yes, this nigga did hide the laptop from last season. He's right. been hitting. But at the end of the day, he's always kept it 100 with both. No, and no. He's always, Wait, oh, you're talking about with Angela. I'm not talking about Proctor. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm talking about, about um, Keisha. Not Keisha. Silva. Yes. Girl, I don't blame him for Chunk and Deuce. I don't really, I don't like him as a character, but no. I don't blame him for Chunk and Deuce. I don't like him as a character. But um, no. also, um, he's horrible. So, so, bro, I, I'm just like, I'm so on the edge of my seat with Tommy right now. Why? Because I cannot wait till he finds out that um, Teresa is oh, playing him. This- and he's going to find out. I think he's going to, like, honestly, I think he's going to get a really big hint this yeah. next show because we just found the. It, the information was passed along to Angela. And, you know, Angela and Tommy working together now. The, it, the bug just been put in her ear that there's somebody watching Tommy. This is the thing about Tommy that killed me while you talking about this bug. Why the hell you drive this loud-ass blue Mustang, Bro. Tommy? Bro, uh, not Why? only that. It's noticeable. I feel, like, I feel like Tommy's so wrong for how he's doing his mom yeah. right now, bro. I feel like he's so wrong. I feel like he's wrong. Okay, I don't want to sit and say he's just completely wrong. I understand. I feel like he's wrong. I understand his sentiment, you know. However, I mean, shit, Kate done put him through some shit. Chick on drugs and all types of stuff. And I mean. At the end of the day, she was there. I mean, you know, I mean, not to say that she wasn't a bad parent. Because okay. obviously we don't know the full backstory behind it. But we know enough to know that she was a bad parent. But at the same time, it's like you have, you, you, you have fully like just kicked her to the curb as her being your parent, as her being a part of your life, and you just, like, picked up the ball with somebody who you really don't know that you can trust. You feel like you can trust them, but at the end, in the oh, grand Tommy. scheme of things, you don't, you can't really trust them. But also, not only that, bro, he's not, like, I feel like 
He's been very irrational and not looking at it from both sides. You, your dad, first of all, cheated on his wife that he's still with, was running with your mom. Then he had mm-hmm. you. And then he kicked her to the curb and you to the curb because he didn't want his wife to find out. So he's like, fuck that. I'm not having neither one of y'all in my life. And he really, originally, he didn't even want um, uh, want the, the wife, I forget her name, want the wife to even know about Tommy now. Yeah, but I think she been new. I mean, she's not a she's not a stupid lady. She's right. very intelligent. I think she knew, and I think at the end of the day, um, she's really rooting for Tommy, honestly, because she she has a sense of integrity that Teresi doesn't have. Right. And because I mean, even when she was like, "So you gonna be a rat?" That's what we doing. We ratting folks out now. That's what we doing. We right. being a rat. But you know what? Speaking of Tommy and ghosts, especially Fifty Cent, let's talk about these teeth, though. You seen their teeth? Especially Fifty Teeth. <laughs> Them teeth. This nigga veneers is on something. Wow. So let's talk about these teeth. <laughs> so this portion of the show is sponsored by Elite Dental Wellness. At Elite Dental Wellness, our vision is to create a welcoming practice that will offer exceptional dental care and a lifetime of dental wellness. We are committed to the finest possible oral care and the overall health and well-being of our patients elite dental wellness is built upon a foundation of integrity expertise and service through our commitment to modern dentistry continuing education and a friendly atmosphere we strive to make our patients feel that they are a part of our family dentistry can be scary daunting and uncomfortable dr batiste and her team work tirelessly to ensure your comfort make your appointment today with dr chandra batiste at elite dental wellness by calling 713-789-8680. Y'all like my little commercial voice, didn't you? Sound good, don't it? I know. <laughs> Been working on it. The Been working on them voiceovers. <laughs> working on it. Give to the girl. No okay. Um, I think, I think, I, I just can't wait. For, I just know there, there's so much stuff coming, bro. Mm-hmm. And I just can't wait to see. Also, on the, the closing scene for the last show, those were the, I, I, I was like, very tired at the end of watching it. But those were the cops that ran in on on Dre, right? Yeah, for the that head. was the feds for real, Bro, for real. I cannot wait to see him go dead. I can't wait he, to see I feel like Tommy's time. gonna be the one to get Dre, and I can't wait to see the shit happen. You know what tripped me out about Tommy real quick before we move on? Tommy, he tries to be inconspicuous. Like, every time he goes off to murder somebody. But this nigga come out looking like somebody jockey. Like, he rides horses. He looks like he just came from some type of fox hunt. Um, very, very equestrian no, looks. Very, very equestrian, like, swag. Hunt. Yes. Very, you know, my daughter has a pony at the stables. Wow. And, and it just, I don't understand. Like, you drive this loud. I don't get it. I really want you to get rid of your car. Why? It should at least be black, bro. Nigga. How they don't know you there? You got a bright blue Mustang they and it's loud know. as fuck. They do know. I don't get it. He gets away every time yeah. and no one knows this car except uh, the feds when they put the little bug. Right. That's it. I'm annoyed by you. That's all. And then his window's mm. not even tinted. Nigga. They not tinted. Oh, that's a hard <laughs> nigga. It just frustrates me to high heaven. I like Tommy as a character because he's very conflicted, but nigga. You try not to be obvious. We see you. Yeah. We see you in, in your jockey life. outfit and your loud ass Mustang. Bro, also, Shit. and I know, and I know we were, but we were Ooh. wrapping this up real quick. But um, Teresi's, Teres, the, the guy that rolled Teresi, I don't know his name either, the other Italian, he's going to go. He's going to go. He's going to go, bro. Yeah. Like, he getting popped this season. Like, I, I see it happening. He's getting popped. Ugh. Also, what really like bugs me i don't know if it's like a new york thing and that's why they have it in the show they don't what? say italians they say italians. Italians. Girl, italians that's black folk i know black folk that ain't even from new york i know black folk that ain't from new york and they say italians my daddy used to say italian food okay and he from dallas texas so i just think that's a that's a i don't know italian you know that's what we do also i want to see i don't know I want to see after this. Now I'm I'm definitely gonna be team. I don't know. I can't I can't say that. I'm not even gonna say it. I just feel bad saying it. But bro, if Tariq don't get his shit together after this episode, Let's, if he do not get his shit together after this episode, bro, he better not be trying to slay no more dope. You're not a dope. Honestly, Tariq got heart. 
Tariq got heart. Let's quickly Tariq talk about this heart. nigga. Let's quickly. We're but gonna... he got to go, bro. I Let's... mean, like, his little gangster act, it has to, it, it got to die. Tariq, I hope you shit it on yourself <laughs> when Kanan, because did you see his face when yeah. Kanan went straight savage? First of all, this Kanan, this nigga made you slang dope on a corner in a neighborhood, and you don't even know what's going on. And then on top of that, this nigga killed his own son. Why are you riding with him? He killed Why his own son. are you riding with him? I, don't trust, I mean, I guess that was the turning point for him. It was like, nigga, you killed your own son, but... Nigga, you try to be big and bad, try to be Ghost Baby Junior, Baby Ghost, whatever. And it's like, nigga, he killed his son. Yeah. So what makes you think? Like, I hope you just fucked up your pants majorly in that vehicle and realized yeah, when you I could not get out. I would definitely pissed on myself. That's what he gets. I would definitely you pissed should. on myself. Take your ass back to choke. I would de- like focus on your study. <laughs> Goddamn. Yes, his his little Ugh. gangster, his little gangster uh, <laughs> streak has got to go, bro. Ugh. We have to kill that. Like. Tariq, you're done. You're done with the gangster shit. You- this portion of the show is sponsored by Houston Housewives of Finance. Did you know that only four states in the United States offer financial education? 33% or more than 77 million of Americans don't pay their bills on time. 39% of Americans carry, car- carry credit card debt from month to month. And 39% of adults say they don't have enough savings. Don't become one of these statistics. Let Houston Housewives of Finance advise you on increasing your cash flow and becoming your own money manager by scheduling your complimentary personal financial strategy. Contact Houston Housewives of Finance today at one 844 or email us at info at Houston Housewives of Finance dot com. Ask us how you can participate in a complimentary financial literacy workshop near you. Houston Housewives of Finance are the new faces of the new age of financial services. You guys go get your coins together. Okay. Alrighty. Um so we had so much to talk about about power. Um, there is a lot to talk about uh, as the season continues to unravel. I'm sure that uh, we will get into another discussion about power because we have not even seen the best uh, mm-hmm. to come for the season. I already know. But uh, with that being said, we're going to roll into our next topic. And um, that's hashtag Beehive, hashtag b and j Hashtag crazy ass fan. Okay, so I know you guys seen um, this past Sunday at um, the On the Run On the Run Two tour um, over in Atlanta. Their first show in Atlanta because they did two shows. Yeah, they did. Um, we had a crazy, belligerent, intoxicated fan run up on the stage and try to get backstage to be in J. Um. And we've seen the dancers, like, spring into action to attack this man. Uh, but the man in question, his name is, you ready for this? Anthony <clears throat> Charles Thomas Maxwell. Black. <laughs> Negro male. Um, that him. is his name. We seen him right on the stage. Um, again, he was drunk. And then we've seen the dancers, like, spring into action, like, what is this nigga doing? This is not a part of our act. Um, but he did not. So... Um, Beyonce and Jay-Z did not press charges against him. Um, and they didn't press charges against him, but he did get charged by the police of Atlanta for disorderly conduct and he got a citation. So what y'all think? Cause the Beehive went crazy about this. These niggas jumped in action like a samurai force, um, Dora Milaje protecting Black Panther, like bitch, you ain't going to get to the queen. Like, Protect the queen at all costs. Niggas? He literally was so close to them, dog. These niggas are like the crazy 88s on Kill Bill. And they're in this yellow like them, too. Like, they're just going ham. And, hey, you're not going to get to the queen. And I heard, actually, Jay-Z did touch him. Yeah. Like, yeah, they said um, he did get close enough to touch Jay-Z. But wow. he kind of backed that up. But it was funny. I thought it was really cute how Beyonce, the next day at the next show, at the very end, she walked out and said, hi ha and did like a karate oh, yeah, kick. I, seen that. I thought it was really, really cute. Like, hey, she gonna fuck you up too. I'm just saying. <laughs> I mean, if it ain't her, it's Solange. 
It's someone. Solange is definitely going to fuck you is, up. Don't ever man. run on her set. <laughs> Do not run on her set because she's going to fuck you up for the show. I've had the pleasure of seeing her in concert. She's amazing. She's so good live. I it's would sick. definitely go back to a salon show. Come back to Houston. First of all, drop us in the bomb ass oh, album. Cause seat at the table was just girl, girl, girl. So it's a classic. It's amazing. All the way through. Every song, no skips. Yeah. Bring us another one of those. But Yes, the Beehive was at, like bananas about this. You know, they was like, protect the queen. Don't come on her set trying to comfort her. Apparently, um, they were also saying about his, I think it was his Twitter page. He was tweeting out all this crazy stuff. Like, apparently, he was trying to fight somebody. What? The sources the sources did not say who he was trying to fight, but he ran on stage to fuck somebody up. So, you felt the best thing to do. Was, you know what? I'm so close to this stage. I don't want to get in the fight or get my ass whooped. I'm just going to jump on stage to proceed to walk further back and be like, hey, Jay Z, Beyonce, let me in because these niggas try to fuck me up. No. <laughs> Decisions, choices, people. Choices. I say this shit all the time. Like, what the fuck was you thinking, my guy? Like, oh, yeah, this is the smart thing. I'm just going to jump up here. These motherfuckers is about to get you. Her whole crew. They will get you. Like, seriously, like, Beyonce don't even have to breathe on you, nigga. Like, a whole squad is going to just get you. The internet will get you first. Yes! They will. Like, what? We have is fucking nuts, They're, bro. Yeah. They're nuts. They, they're I am not I am not a formal member of the Beehive, okay? <laughs> I'm not a formal member, okay? Um, I do like Beyonce. I am a fan, but I am not a Beehive nigga. I'm a, I'm a Navy girl, okay? Because I love Rihanna. Now I will come for, I will come for you for Rihanna. I'm not gonna lie to you, but I'm not a Beehive girl. Really? I, I think I'm in it. I'm just not as strong as others. Um, I'm more of a Solange fan. I don't know what she calls her peeps, but I'm definitely with her. Niggas. Solange <laughs> out of out of the No Sisters. I mean, I don't know. I hope. Uh, you know, we love you both. We we love you both. I just want to put that out there because I don't know who watches this shit. Um, but we love you both. But out of the two sisters, and I have an older sister as well, and we have a similar relationship. Mm-hmm. I'm definitely the Solange, and my sister's more of the Beyonce. Like, if I had to hang with one of them, I'd rather hang with Solange because she, she rolls up. I seen her video. She be twisting up. <laughs> she, uh, she likes to twerk in cars and have a good time. She's true. And she will uh, clap back. And come for you with the quickness. And True. I love all of these things. And she's just. Well, B ain't got a clap back. No, but that's the thing. She doesn't have to. But I love the fact Solange don't give a fuck. She's going to go on and come step you. out there. Sure. She just seems like the more fun sister, you know. I think I, I, would, I, think I, would, I would hang out with Beyonce. Really? Yeah. Because of the videos that we see of her, like, outside, just, like, living her life, she seems like a fun person. I know she's fun. I would hang out with you, B-Girl. Not to say that I wouldn't hang out with Solange, because, girl, I would hang out with you, too. Yeah. But, you know, I would I would hang out with Beyonce if I had the choice in between the two. Yeah. Um, but also, over this past weekend, and this happened in Dallas, um... This happened on Sunday night as well, I believe, in Dallas. So, Sway Lee was doing a concert in Dallas, and a fan threw a phone on the stage, and it just did not turn out pretty. He stopped the concert because this phone hit him in the face. I seen it. I seen the video. he had his lip busted, um, and they chipped his tooth. Damn. And also, he had, like, uh, a bruise on his face. Um, from this phone hitting him and I can imagine because bro a phone is like it's not a soft object it's not a soft object at all and if you throw it hard enough which I know they had to have been throwing it hard because you got it on the stage and you got it high enough to hit him so that hole was coming full speed ahead bro that's not nice I think people need to and and, and you know what the nice thing about it is well at, initially he was going to sue that fan I don't think he would have got gotten anything out of it but maybe it was just a scare for the fan he yeah. didn't drop the charges and decide that he's not going to um, press charges nor sue him but bro y'all have to learn y'all have to learn uh, you know um concert etiquette because yeah, you don't throw things on the stage. I don't care. I mean, you know, you, you go to some shows and you have ladies doing things like throwing their panties or their bra. But bro, I promise you, a bra or a pair of panties that first of all they need to be clean. Let's let's get that clear. Don't throw some some dirty panties. Don't throw or up nothing, Mercy. 
Lord, who wants Mercy. to have Mercy panties? Mercy bra. They you, all wet. Bra, you had them on the whole bra, show. You know, black, yeah. you know women have a tendency to sit and wear that good bra for about a whole week straight without washing like, it. Ew. You, you know, so it's, it's so like, I'm just bad. saying, we, want, we, want not, not, we don't need the work bra. Get the cute bra <laughs> that you don't wear. That you have in the drawer, just yeah, throw that, that one. Set that you ain't never wearing. For Not nobody. the daily bra. Niggas don't want to see a set, bro. I'm gonna let you know right now. Don't buy them hoes. They don't want to see them. They don't give a fuck at all. Yeah, guys don't care. They don't. But um, That's facts. but yes, y'all need to learn concert etiquette. Don't throw things on the stage. Cause I'm telling you, I I'm not a performer um as a musician, but I'm on stage for events and shit. I don't care how excited that you get. Now, obviously, the type of setting that I'm in, people are not throwing things on stage, but you just don't know with these crowds these days because they just seem like people are crazy. And also, I feel like people do a lot of things to get attention and get to be a fucking hashtag. Don't throw nothing on my stage, bro, because I'm going to stop my shit. And depending on what you threw and if it hit me, I might just cancel the whole thing. Yeah, my I've just seen it happen. Because if, if you're putting my, first of all, you put my face in danger to throw something on this fucking stage. You could have put that man eye out. Yeah, that's You could have put talk. his whole eye out, bro. Yeah, you could have made this nigga fatty, and that's not cool. Not cool at all. Don't you know. throw things on the stage. And don't run up on the stage intoxicated. Now, I'm not going to lie to you. If I was close enough to the stage, I would have ran on it up too. <laughs> I would have ran on it up too. I would have ran. I would take that citation to run on the stage no, with me, bro. I'll no. take that hoe. I pass. I take it. No, the queen, I see her from right I'll here. I'll pay it out. Put me on a payment plan. Nope. I'm taking got, this citation, nope, dog. that is one bill. I do not need a bitch's <laughs> Not only am I going to get on the stage, he crazy because he ran straight through that hoe. I would have started twerking. I would have twerked right Mm-mm. up on the set. Nope, I ain't got time to get jumped because I'm going to sit here. Crip walk. I would have south no. side. We're going to do something up on this damn stage, my guy. See, he better than me because I couldn't do it. Because for one, I know my temper. I know how I get in situations with my anxiety. So as soon as I seen the crazy 88s coming for me, nigga, I'm going to attack everyone. And I'm going to bust out wrestling moves. I'm going to pull out Ric wow. Flair's and just straight go in. <laughs> so I know for whatever I'm getting Not charged Rick with, Flair. it's going to be more than a situation. <laughs> it's going to be more than a situation and citation. I'm going to woo. <laughs> and it's just gonna be a hot mess so i don't want any of those issues so guess what i'm gonna you know this is the one thing that is like with me i talk to myself a lot not out loud in my head i pull Issa race i pull Issa's a lot up here so i see myself doing the wrong fucked up thing and i'll be like damn bitch you don't want to go down that way. You see how they taking this nigga? They dragging this nigga. <laughs> like you don't want to get dragged. Nope. Okay. Well, just sit here and just enjoy this, the concert. Just okay. Halo girl. Mm-hmm. This is good. Mm-hmm. That's it. Let me be at a mm-hmm. concert and I have the opportunity. You know, I want to be invited on stage. I don't want to just bombard that hell. Invite me on the stage. Like, you know who concert that I do want to go to? And we're going to wrap this up real quick. But whose concert I do want to go to and I want them to pull me on the stage? I like, Jama- I like Jamaican, Caribbean culture. I love reggae. Spice. I'm coming to your shit. Oh, I'm she's going a really good to, performer. I am going to a Spice concert and I want her to pull me on stage because I'm going to twerk that. I'm wearing something real loose intentionally i'm shaking that ass i'm gonna get on my head yeah. on her show and shake that ass i love dance hall so <laughs> yes yes girl yes. that's just my start i want to go to it i want her to pull me on stage i'm gonna twerk that ass yeah i'm all about dance you hall. hear me spice For real you hear me that'd be fun that's really fun for sure should, that's like it's so much going on with that but we will talk about that just later don't, just don't it, d- here's my one request don't let one um caribbean men get behind me i can't handle them they're gonna bump me right off the stage Boop, bitch gonna go flying ahead because they are way too aggressive. I can't handle all of that. They Let do me do just a lot. Shake it and you watch from afar. Don't come hopping up on Mm-mm. top of me. No, they gonna nah. hop and ride you like a rock uh, show, nah, girl. Nah, nah, nah. That's nah, what nah. they do. They can't just sit here and watch you from afar. They gonna be like, uh, we can slow me. wine. We can slow wine all day, but don't be like humping me on the back i can't no they're gonna they gotta put a saddle on and ride you girl that's what they do it wouldn't be dance hall if they didn't like that's just what they're gonna do they're gonna sit up here i I will that's that's what it is girl you just gotta get ready ready yet you gotta you gotta get well you get ready you you, if you stay ready you ain't gotta get ready anybody yeah i'm gonna get in the gym and get my back straight (laughs) oh damn not in alignment gotta get my back together because y'all gonna bust my shit at okay i'm already little but yeah I think that's it. Fuck that nigga. And um, next time, just be smart. 
like I said, it's a crazy ADHD. Basically, just fuck learn some them. fucking some, some, some etiquette. concert etiquette, bro. Yeah, don't don't do neither one of those things. Those two. That was the did. worst concert. I mean, to do that because these people yeah. were extremely high profile. Yeah. Like my nigga, is you dumb or is you dumb? You're dumb. So dumb. don't do that. Um, yeah, that's all I gotta say Speaking about that. Speaking of, you know, being dumb, uh, we're gonna tell you a place where you can come and get some some intelligent insight and information, okay? And that's right here at the Spear, okay? Because this portion of the show is sponsored by the Spear. Are you starting your business and looking for a place to advertise? Do you have a need to reach out to thousands of people across the world to build your brand or sell your product? If so, get your product placement and advertising needs handled right here at The Spear. We offer a wide variety of content delivery platforms, including iTunes, Google Play, SoundCloud, YouTube, and Stitcher. Plus, we have a vast demographic reach within the United States, as well as modern countries across the globe. Our enriched content inspiring dialogue coupled with your strategic ad is surely to hit the mark every time call us today at area code 832-772-7789 or send an email over to advertise at the spear.tv thank you you guys definitely come check us out we bomb as fuck um, but anywho, to roll, um, to wrap up our show, the last thing that we want to talk about, and that's because uh, we just passed the anniversary date of Hurricane Harvey. Hashtag Hurricane Harvey. Harvey. So last year around this time, um, actually Harvey made um, landfall on August twenty fifth. Um, and it marked a very historic date, not only in Houston, but all across the world. Uh, nobody had ever seen a city flood the way that we flooded. And, um, you know, we were a hashtag for quite some time. We're still our hashtag, um, hashtag Houston Strong. And it, it's so many lives were impacted and so, so much change for so many people because people lost their homes. You know, areas were completely underwater. People lost vehicles. P- some people, unfortunately, um, lost loved ones. Mm-hmm. And it just was a very um, sad time for the city. But the uplifting part to that is how everybody came together. You know, we had um, we had the relief game. Shout out to DJ Mr. Rogers and Trader True because they really put in work and they they very much so put their money where their mouth is. Both of these men came out of their pockets, out of their own money, out of their own financial situations to help people that were impacted. They were delivering diapers and food and water and getting and getting on boats and getting people out. And we we greatly appreciate all the cities. People came all the way from New York. New York to help us here and we appreciate y'all so much because it was it was it was it was drastic it was it was crazy you know and I was in the midst of it I am very grateful because fortunately for me I didn't flood everything around me flooded I lived um on Eldridge at the time and every I, I was on a basically an island. I was on an island because yeah. everything around me was flooded. Definitely. But I was so grateful that where my my town home did not flood. Um, but this it's just a, it, it's it's a very it's a very um, I it was an eye opener, and it's just amazing to see where we were then and where we are now. Yeah. Even though we're still rebuilding. Oh my God. Even though we're still uh, rebuilding. And speaking of, um, you know, rebuilding for Hurricane Harvey and things that are happening, um, shout out to Slim Thug because he's actually um, going to give a family a home um, that lost their home in, in, in Hurricane Harvey. Um, and then we had, of course, J.J. Watt that raised $41.6 million for the city. Um, so that, so, you know, that was, that, that was really dope as well um and then shout out to all the celebrities that came out to donate for us um so many people donated um to the cause and 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 again we just we we were so thankful for everybody that came out to to help us and support us in that time 
but it was crazy it was it was crazy as someone who actually went through it and watched it happen and people's entire houses get flooded bro my my friend got rescued on a boat yeah it, and it was crazy because it's like we can't we want to help you but we can't get to you yeah damn I'm just looking at this, just the whole thing with the time lapse that we're showing is crazy. It looks like a like a river. Yeah, it pretty much is. Um, you know, like like Tip said, just to reiterate, shout out Cajun Navy. Y'all came through with these boats. Yes. Y'all said, look, shout we coming Cajun down. Navy for sure. I said, look, we gonna come. <laughs> and <laughs> even parts of Louisiana flooded, and they still oh, yeah. made their way out. Yeah, you know, I, I don't know. It just made me think of my relatives. Well, you know, babe, we gonna come down there share with these boats and just yeah. you know. So yeah, shout shout you guys out. Um, I was out in it. I'm glad and very blessed that I wasn't affected by it um, personally. I actually got my Hurricane Harvey story is actually a really interesting one because it was like a big sleepover and we kind of just you know when you in a hurricane you gonna live wow. off cookout food. Um, yeah. That's pretty much what we did. Yeah. Um, we had hot dogs and burgers and steaks and. I think the power might have flickered, but luckily it maintained. But right. like Tip said, it was like we were on the island. I was actually off of Derry Ashford, and that's where I was you at for like really a week. Close to me. Yeah, so that's where I was at for like a week, and it's like a big little creek thingy near where my friend lives. So it was like completely filled to the brim. And when I tell you this yeah. thing is like twenty feet deep or more, and to say that thing was filled to the brim and overflowing into the street, like it was a mess. Yeah. So you know, I'm just blessed and thankful. Um, you know that 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 the Lord looked out for me, and um, you know I just all I can say is just prayers for everybody else who's still going through because right. that's still tough. And um, I know the government is doing a study now to see how everyone's health is affected. They're doing a trial yeah. to see how everyone's health is affected um, that yeah. had mold and things yeah. in the house. Yeah, so. yeah, that's definitely yeah. a concern. That's, that's something to look yeah. into. Um, but again, uh, my I just I I just can't express enough like thank you to all the people that came out to help us because and you know e e even the people in the city who weren't flooded. Everybody came together. It just, yeah. it was, it was crazy. Yeah. It was crazy. I went out to volunteer and um, I went out to help people pass out things. I didn't I did have much too. to give at the time, you know, um, so I just, I just gave my time, <laughs> yeah. you know, I just gave my time. I was there to, to volunteer and I was at Toyota and I was at Georgia Brown and I was mm -hmm. helping, you know, and, and it was, it was just, again, it was so crazy to see people just like literally the look on their faces like, bro. Where am I going to go? Yeah. Where am I going to go? It's very humbling. Yes. Very, sure. very humbling experience. Um, When you see people who literally lost everything. I have friends of mine who lost things that they'll never recover. And I mean, right. more sentimental value um, and monetary value as right. well. So, um, I mean, I'm just blessed that we are here. We're able to sit and talk about it. And we're not going through another one right now. Right. So, okay. I mean, you know, um, like my friend says, it's always a blessing to be a blessing. So that's what it was about around that time, I think, with the spirit of the city. So. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So hashtag Houston Strong. We were so down for the cause. Yeah. We're so down for y'all. And again, everybody, all this, it was so crazy to me for people from New York flew out. You know what's so crazy that I mentioned that? I, I, I actually flew out like three days after Harvey. Harvey. I flew out to New York. I, I had plans to go to New York Fashion Week, and I was, like, so scared because I was like, oh, my God, I'm not going to be able to catch my flight. But um, I ended up opening the airports up, um, like, literally, I think, two days before I was scheduled to fly out, they opened the airports back up. Um, so I flew out to New York, but what is so crazy, I got stuck in New York. I got stuck in New York for two days because, you know, once the hurricane was was in Houston, it moved over to, well, not Hurricane Harvey, but another hurricane moved over and tore through um, Florida, through Miami. And my flights got canceled because of that. So I was in New York for two extra days, mm. which was expensive as fuck. Yep. And not only that, bro, I flew out on, I flew out on 9-11. I flew out of New York on 9-11. Girl. <laughs> That's nuts, and yeah. I will not be doing that because so you know what? That mm -hmm. was on the plan. Like, Y'all have to give me the spirit be moving in me, so I ain't going to get on this flight. I don't know. I think of things like Final Destination and just Jesus. So, so I, I commend so you. I ready to get home, bro, and I, I had you. missed like three days of work because I was stuck. <laughs> It was crazy. But anywho, um, that was our, you know, that's remembering Hurricane Harvey. We're so glad to be past that and to be in a, in a better state as a city. And then, you know, as, as just people who went through it.
thank you guys for your support. Um, continue to support because there's so many people that are still in need um, yeah. after Hurricane Harvey. Yeah, so, for sure. That's definitely something to say. But <laughs> we are out of time. We're done, son. <laughs> and we're closing up the show. But again, so let me tell y'all about these events that we have going on just before we close the show. So, um, Saturday, September 1st, we will be in Austin. We are covering, we will be there for media. We are covering the um, Capital City African American, or uh, Capital City Black Film Festival. Mm -hmm. um, that's going to be in Austin. Definitely come out to see us. It will be there um, strictly excuse me, for media, um, but still come out to see us. We welcome, you know, anybody that's in, in the Austin area um, that watches the show. We definitely welcome you guys to come meet us. We even might be down for, we, we won't be there very long because we have, um, we have to get back to Houston, but we even yeah. welcome if y'all want to do a little meet and greet, you know, y'all want to have drinks with the kid, you know, come out, let us know. Hit us on our Twitter page at the Spear TV hashtag. Or, you know, our personal Instagrams, um, myself, at underscore Tiffany Noco. Hit us there. Let us know. Uh, we can definitely arrange for something. Uh, and, it, and if there's any um, artist or, you know, anyone that, you know, may want to come on as a guest in the Austin area, definitely hit us up. We can arrange that as well. Um, and then on the second for Houston, because we love y'all so much, uh, we will be hosting an insecure watch party at Cafe Brazil. Now, we have DJ Sly Fox in the mix. Definitely come out and kick it with us. It's going to be live as fuck. We will be doing um, open an, an open questionnaire or <laughs> a, um, what, what am I trying to say? A panel. A panel. Jeez yeah. Louise. We will be doing a panel as well with questions, discussing the show. We are giving out prizes at this event, so you don't want to miss that because we give out some really good prizes, okay? Um, so come catch us at Cafe Brazil. That's at 8 p.m. on the 2nd. That is um, that's Sunday. And then for Dallas, our Dallas people, we will be at um, Grits Knit. You can search Gritsnit. It's a um, R&B soul festival that's going to be hosted in Dallas at the Long Hall Longhorn. I knew that was going to come out so choppy at the Longhorn Ballroom in Dallas. That is going to be September fifteenth. That is a. Um, I, th I believe the festival itself starts at. It either I think it starts at two. Um, it's definitely. Two or three. Good. Three? I think it's two or three. Two one or three. One, yeah, one of those times. Um, definitely go to the website, gritsnit.com. Yeah. Get your ticket. They are only $25, you guys. And there's a very, very good lineup. Good lineup. Um, heading that lineup would be RC and the Grits. Um, and then there's about, I think, five more performers. So you, you're you really paying. It's a very, very reasonable cheap price uh, for such a great lineup. I mean, just to see RC and the Grits themselves for $25, bro, like, come on. They're really good. If you guys don't know them, I've seen them before live a few times just because that's what a nigga does. I like to go to shit. Um, but RC and the Grits, they're Erica Badu's backup band. Um, that's one of the things that they do. They're a band on their own. But I'm just saying uh, for you know, relevancy's sake. That's who they are. They're B Erica Badu's backup band. Also, there's Tedra Moses. There's Eric Roberson. It's a few other people as Bobby well. Bobby Sessions. Yeah, Bobby Sessions is there. Um, so um, yeah, check out, the check out the lineup online. Check out the lineup online. Definitely buy your tickets. And come out to see us because Dallas. Dallas, bro. We got some really good shit in store for y'all. Y'all don't, don't even know. We will have a tent. We will be there with games. We are giving out prizes at Dallas as well. But we have um, some big prizes for Dallas. So come out and see us. Um, but we're going to get ready. We're going to go ahead and close out the show. I'm going to let Chris oh, um, give you all of her information. And then we will be shutting it down. Remember, you can follow me on the gram at underscore Tiffany Noco. Go to my website, TiffanyNoco.com. I have I have some new posts up. I just recently did an interview with Tokyo Vanity. Um, for all of my love and hip-hop fans out there, definitely go check that out. Let me tell you, she's she is fucking nuts. And I mean that in the best way possible. I mean that in such a good way. She's such a she's she's a she's a very outspoken person and I, I really appreciate the energy that she bring and just being herself check out my interview with her um and then again before we roll out follow us on twitter follow our hashtag page on twitter um at the spear it's not at the spear it's spear tv hashtag go follow us 
Okay. I don't even know what to say. <laughs> um, honestly, I think Tiff has said it all. Um, once again, the name is Chrissy Bet. You can find me here on IG, Elijah. <laughs> okay. You know, we like to talk to, to Elijah sometimes. So anyway, you can find me at IG at Cherche underscore La underscore Chris here, as well as my website, blackoutofthebox.com. Have some hot shit coming for you there, as well as with hashtag. I'm a busy motherfucker. So uh, if you need to hit us, please, that is the best place, IG or my website for sure. So, yep, that's all we got. We done time. All right, you guys. We thank you for tuning in. Um, as always, go subscribe to the show. We have Please. several different platforms. And we just got on Spotify. I know whoop there whoop. are some people out there. And I used to be one of those people until I started using iTunes that are just like, I ain't fucking with iTunes. And then we have some Android <laughs> users out there. Hey, you know? don't, don't come for me I today. Wasn't, I wasn't don't even. come for me today. I We're rolling out. For y'all. I wasn't come for y'all. But we have some Android <laughs> users out there that don't have iTunes. Check us out on iHeartRadio. Check us out on iTunes. Check us out on Spotify. SoundCloud. SoundCloud. Go check us out. We have so many different platforms that you can subscribe to us. So make sure you do that, you guys. We thank you. We love you for tuning in with us. And we will see y'all next week. Peace. See you later. Bye.